at dinner tonight before the reading, uh, we were talking about smart dogs and uh, about a dog that had a vocabulary of about 200 words. And so I wanted to read you a poem about my dog, who is not that kind of dog. <laughs> uh, he did not have a very large vocabulary. Uh, and, uh, and we tortured him uh, unfairly. Um, this, this, uh, this poem is called Torturing the Dog. To our ratty mutt bear, any other hundred sounds could be his name. He'd tilt his tangled ears to buddy, bimbo, Buddha, wag his tail at buffoon or bum. And the cat, preferring to remain nameless, watched him roll and sit and beg to beefcake or butthead. All that mattered was saying it high and rich, dangling the word like a biscuit above his nose. My sister and I, bored, would position ourselves on opposite sides of the yard with bear between us, calling and calling his name to see where his loyalties lay. We'd croon any name we could think of, piercing the air with shrill devotion, reveling in our power as our dog ran great spasmodic circles between us tongue hanging out, round and round, shredding the grass, kicking up dirt, drool trailing like reins no one would ever want to control, running and running until he puked. <laughs> A poet at heart, he rhymed sweet with treat, walk with talk, sopping up vocabulary with the small sponge of his brain. He was my first teacher dog crazy with love, loving everyone equally, running circles around our created confusion, delirious with our attention, whatever our intent, <laughs> taking every lovely last syllable as his own. So I miss my dog. <laughs> and the next poem I'll read is one that is the result of years and years of research um, with my grandmother watching TV in her living room. Mostly we watched America's Funniest Videos, uh, sometimes Wheel of Fortune, um, but this one is about um, America's Funniest Home Videos, and the title is, After Uncle Fred Nearly Dies, We Send the Tape to America's Funniest Home Videos. It's clear we like our trampolines taut and ready to dump our dumb asses into the nearest thorny hedge. We like to watch ourselves mugging it up, big hams, strutting our stuff, then falling down a flight of icy stairs. We do it on purpose because we fear we might grow too proud without the occasional crotch shot. So consumed with our antics, practical jokes, dopey dogs chasing their own tails, we can barely hold the camera still. The toddlers who molest our windows are darling. They don't yet understand the transparency of glass. Cats, we must have cats, lots of them, defying nature or gravity, falling or flying toward their unsuspecting prey. We use each other as pinatas. We set our blushing brides on fire. Even the minister can't contain himself. It doesn't take a genius to know the hockey puck, a 70 mile per hour insult will find its way to the softest spot. It's so funny, or will be, the broken noses, jammed fingers, bruised testicles, just give us money and time. We can't imagine the world wouldn't love us. Our hilarious rears stuck in lawn chairs, our slow children ramming their heads over and over into chain link fences. Look, look at the small dog pissing on the big dog. We want so much for it to be worth something. So. Like I said, research. Uh -huh. 
many, many years. Uh, and then I'll read a final one from, from, my, my, from my book. Uh, um, the Amazing Cannonball Couple. That's the one I want to read. This one actually, um, I wrote this poem when my husband and I lived in Arizona and we had train tracks that went through our backyard. And the train was so close that when it went through, it rattled the dishes in our cabinet. And um, one day, the circus came to town and it went through our backyard. And the, they stood on the railings of, their, of the train cars waving at us. It was like right out of a movie. And they, they went on to Phoenix. Uh, I never actually got to see the amazing cannonball couple, but they were on that train. And so this is sort of my, my, uh, my imagination of what it would be like to be them. Where are you? I know you're, there you are. The amazing cannonball couple. I should have been a school teacher, she says climbing into the cannon beside mine. Her helmet glitters, and beneath it, she wags her flame-retardant wig in mock regret. Shot out at 65 miles per hour, there's no sense in looking back. It could kill. Atop this keg of gunpowder, we await our cue. This must have been what we meant by better or worse. Though I doubt we could have then imagined a sesamoid fractured five times, twice dislocated shoulder, eyebrows singed and penciled back for each night's performance. As long as our bodies bounce back, we've vowed to continue. We could have been anything. She's good at math, and I've always liked geography. Each night, we collapse into sleep, Bodies propelled through dreams we'll never share. The ringmaster begs the audience for silence, and I know exactly how many seconds we have left. As the flame travels up the fuse, I hear her breathing, steady, and know her mind is focused on the moment of impact. What strength it takes to land just right so nothing breaks. Who would want lesson plans, small desks in rows after this? We've taught ourselves to fly and fall against nature to be both bird and stone. For a moment suspended above the crowd, two independent projectiles, one marvelous act. Thank you.